Well, I was by no means the first choice. Many other judges had been asked and had refused the summons. Well, I would imagine that they were afraid of being assassinated by some fanatic still loyal to the king. I, I imagine that some of them feared that the very act of putting the king on trial was blasphemous. I was reluctant in the first instance. To my shame, I failed to make an appearance until the third sitting of the court. I will admit that I was afraid of being murdered, but when I took my seat in court, I made my own precautions against assassination. I entered court surrounded by bodyguards. I wore armor beneath my robes and even had a special hat fashioned, reinforced with metal in case anybody took it upon themselves to shoot me in the head. But once I'd taken my seat and the court was in session, I committed myself to the task in hand with perfect integrity. Opinion is divided on the matter. Many believe that I did an exceptional job under difficult circumstances. Others feel differently. The clergyman Thomas Fuller said of me that I was a man of execrable memory. Well, he was smaller than I had anticipated. He was stubborn and he was obstinate. He would not take his hat off during court. He pleaded neither guilty nor, nor not guilty. He generally refused to speak uh, unless it was to tell us that he did not recognize the authority of the court, something of which he never missed the opportunity to remind us. When I passed the final sentence of death, then he had something to say. But by that stage, I'd had enough of the king and would not let him speak. I think the trial was as fair as any trial I have ever presided over. The king had the right to speak in his own defense. He chose not to. The king alone is responsible for what happened to him. 